So uh, Rachel Maddow had this two-part interview with Lev Parnas. And the first was Wednesday night. The second one was Thursday night. I did not see all of this live yet. I've only watched clips at this point of Thursday night because uh, my daughter had a, uh, a, a music recital. She did great. But um, after the first night, one of the things that struck me was, what, why is he doing this? It was unclear. And then was also curious as to if John Dowd still um, represented him. I think maybe we talked about this on air yesterday. I can't quite remember. But there were stories that John Dowd, who was the president's attorney, was going to get into a joint defense agreement with Parnas via Rudy Giuliani, uh, with also uh, uh, Igor Fruman, who was Parnas's, I don't know, like, uh, you know, Pancho Sancho, uh, Sancho Panza. And, um, and what it did is by, com by binding them all together, they started to have uh, attorney-client privilege amongst that would cross over a couple of different places. And this was relevant because Paul Manafort had the same deal with Donald Trump via John Dowd, made a deal with prosecutors, and then later prosecutors realized that what he was doing was just getting information. He was taking one for the team, and he was just getting information as to what the prosecutors knew. And relating it back to the president's defense team. And so I was a little suspicious about Parnas. Because it said he was represented by this guy Bondi, but it, there was no stories about resolving his relationship with John Dowd. And uh, that was the big thing that came out of uh, last night's, one of the big things that came out of last night. Uh, apparently, Parnas fired John Dowd. Now... I guess it's conceivable that that's not true and they're still working together. I don't know, but that would be highly unlikely. When John Dowd and the president got into a defense um, agreement with Parnas, they accepted the premise that Parnas and Giuliani, or Giuliani and via Parnas, that they had a unique relationship with each other that could that had to be protected. In other words, Parnas was working more or less for the president or at the president's direction. That's going to have big implications if, if any of the old rules of the way that this stuff works is operable anymore, which it, it, it may not be. But here is uh, Lev Parnas. And the only thing I could think about when he was talking about this is that scene where uh, when... Um, Robert Duvall as uh, the consigliari to, um, uh, you know, the godfather, I can't remember his name uh, uh, in the movie, goes and meets with what's-his-face, the bald guy, in the uh, prison and tells him, you know, like, you know, like uh, what, the, what the Romans used to do. Take one for the team. And that's what apparently Parnas got that, that talk. Doesn't seem as dramatic, but... Mr. Dowd was your attorney for a time, and then you changed attorneys. I fired him in jail. You fired him when you were in jail? Yes. What, what happened there? And Mr. Downing. Uh, basically, uh, when we were arrested, obviously I had nowhere else to call. I didn't know. Uh, we just retained Dowd and Downing. So I called uh, Downing to come there. Uh, and Pause I it for one second. Now, you know, look, it's very possible that what Parnas is doing here is trying to get some type of immunity because there's stuff that he did that was even worse than what he's copping to. Okay? And uh, so you've got to be very, very careful. I don't think he's telling any lies per se. I think he's omitting some things. Although there's some, there, there, some of these things could also be lies. So you have to be very careful, right? But like just even that moment where he says like, I called and then we, he, he stopped at what he was saying and he said, I, well, he didn't know he, when he got arrested, he called somebody and maybe it was Giuliani and maybe it wasn't, but somehow he got in touch with the president's attorneys. Now, I don't know why he doesn't want to reveal that or whatnot, but 
Remember, the whole thing about Parnas here is that he thinks that he's being set up by the Justice Department to be the fall guy for the president of the United States. And, you know, we've heard all these things about the Southern District of New York is so independent. They practically call it a separate agency from the, from the Justice Department. You know, this puts there's a little bit of a question here. You know, we don't know who who to believe, but there is some there there there's some truth to this stuff. All right. So just go back. Go ahead. Uh, when we were arrested, obviously I had nowhere else to call. I didn't know. Uh, we just retained Dowd and Downing. So I called uh, Downing to come there. Uh, and I started seeing in the process of the bail stuff, the way things were going on, that they were more concentrate, concentrating on... I didn't feel that they were trying to get me out. And uh, at that point, uh, I had a meeting with John Dowd and, and Downing inside the jail. Uh, and John Dowd just... Instead of comforting me and, you know, trying to calm me down, telling me, like, it's going to be okay, like, don't worry, basically start talking to me like a drill sergeant and telling me, giving me orders, like, you know, like, be a good boy, like, you know. He said be a good boy? No, like, I don't, I don't, I I don't want to quote him exactly on what the words, what he used in that, because it was a, a while ago and I don't remember exactly, but it was, it was his condescending attitude towards basically, like, who do you think you are, you know, telling the president or Giuliani or anybody to, like, uh, come out and because I one of the things I said I said I can't believe nobody's coming out in our defense and saying like we didn't do like wrong we're good citizens that you know we work and uh, basically word for word and then I said uh, if you don't get out of here right now uh, something bad's going to happen because I don't want to see the two of you and at that point Downing hit the emergency button Mm. and the security took me out and took them out so this is very heated confrontation you told Downing and Dowd to get out I threw them out were they telling you to sacrifice yourself in order to protect the president? That's what I felt. Is the implication of this story of the lawyers um, that you feel that people loyal to the president and close to the president were trying to influence your defense and your case in a way that was against your interests, but in the president's interests? Absolutely. I- yeah. And... I guess the idea is that the reason why he's coming to the media is because he's not sure, you know, if there are prosecutors that he can trust. And I I, I certainly have no idea. (laughs) Um, And it's it's hard. Let's put it this way. If you're the president of the United States or you're Giuliani or you're Dowd or you're any of these people. It is hard to imagine what what value you would get out of having Parn, Parnas come out now. Like, you know, like, I'm, you know, it, it's hard to figure out what the angle would be. It's not like there is a huge hunger in Congress to find something more. Right. Not broadly speaking, at least. And if he is covering up for something much, much, much bigger, I, which I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it is like th- that's the only possible way. Like there's no there's just no far flung theory that you could come up with to suggest that this guy is doing this for some like, you know, QAnon reason. I think he the guy actually is just doing this because he thinks it gives him the maximum leverage. And uh, against what he doesn't think that, you know, he thinks he's going to be the fall guy for this and he's trying not to be. What you can believe of his tale, I don't know. But what it's doing is it's creating pressure on members of the House to go forward with something, bring him in, testify, get a deposition, whatever it is. And as that becomes more intriguing and involve more intrigue, it puts more pressure on those Republican members of the Senate that um, I have been arguing for, you know, ad nauseum is what impeachment is about, really, in terms of the material benefit that we're going to get from it. It may may hurt Donald Trump down the road, may not. I don't you know, I doubt it. Maybe it does. He certainly, it upsets him. It certainly keeps them busy. It keeps that Senate, 
This is going to be the longest break, I would imagine, that the Senate has taken from uh, shoving right wing justices into the into the uh, courts. And so if it's like five less justices that are, uh, you know, judges, I should say, that are in the federal courts that, you know, that's enough. Dianu, as uh, we say at Passover. But. What it what it's also going to do is is hurt these uh, senators. And when I say these senators, go Google the least popular sen- senators in the country. And, um, you know, four out of uh, six of those are on that list. Five. Joni Ernst, Susan Collins, Martha McSally. She's finally done it. You should give yourself uh, the bugle. Yeah, horns. I know where the the thing's broken. We got to get a new iPad. Um, Martha McSally, uh, Tom Tillis, he's crept up a little bit, um, and Corey Gardner. They're all apoplectic right now, and it only gets worse for them. And I got I got news for you. They're hoping that voters are going to forget these votes. Whoever's running against them, those those it, that the voters are not going to get forget these votes, because people are going to pour a lot of money into ads that are going to remind them about these votes. That's the bottom line.